Alrighty folks, hello and welcome. Today I wanted to show you the simple way that I do shading. I've got this quick sketch of Imara from Imara. If you haven't watched it yet, I would really recommend it. And I'll go ahead and include a link in the description for it because it's a really good, really good, and it deserves all the support it can get. Um, pardon me and my sparkling water. Ooh, so disgusting, yummy. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna go through the method that I use. And this method is pretty bendable to any kind of, um, any, almost any like program that you can use. Right now I'm using Photoshop and I'll explain, there's a thing that Photoshop has called a gradient map. You may not have that, so you might need to do it a little differently. And I will explain that hopefully as I go. But to start out with, why don't we go ahead and we're going to use a layer mask or a group mask to go ahead and grab where Imara is and where the background isn't. And I'll show you how to do that because it's something that I learned in school because I did not already know this. And that was actually a really neat thing that helped me. So what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that the sketch is closed all around the outside. And thankfully there's no spaces like where like say someone's hand is on their hip and they, you know, there's like a space in between. Thankfully there's none of that, so we don't have to worry about it. So I'm just gonna go and grab my magic wand. I'm gonna set it to contiguous and I'm going to select outside of her. And you can see all of the outside is select. And then we're gonna go up to select, modify, inverse, nope. Okay, so there is a modify, inverse. Okay, inverse is up here, but I usually just hit command shift I and then select modify contract. We'll only do it by say three pixels. If you have a crisper line, you might wanna only do two, but because my line, I use a sketch uh, pencil. Uh, it's pretty fuzzy and you can see like right here, it's still selecting some stuff that's gonna be, you know, outside. So that's not quite as chill, but it's a simple way to get your selection. So now we have what, what is Amara and what isn't. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a new group and we're gonna hit this little thing down here and voila, we have a selection with just Amara in it. I'm gonna go ahead and fill this with gray and you'll see why later. And then also I don't want, um, the gray just kind of helps me see where things are. And then you can go into the mask and actually edit it. So I'm going to go ahead and you'll see the white makes things selected and the black unselects things. And because I'm going to do her glasses on their own layer, I'm gonna go ahead and just, you know, take this little spot where her glasses are the only thing covering up and I'm gonna leave that out. And voila, we've got a selection for Imara. And then the next step is pretty simple. You're just gonna go in and you're gonna do the flats.
so we got the flats. That is step one done. Don't don't fuck it up like I just did. That's why God gave us control in Z, or God gave us the man who created control Z. Thank you, God, for the man who created control and Z. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to have that layer that's still gray, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to make, we're going to shade on this one. So um, you're just going to use different shades of gray. And this is where it might differ between Photoshop, because Photoshop has shades of gray. I can just automatically snap a color palette onto it. Um, yeah, I'll explain it more in depth later. Uh, but for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to shade this a little bit. I usually do two shades of dark and one shades of highlight. So, and you want your gray to be right about in the middle, your mid-tone gray for the background, because that's gonna keep your colors true. And then everything else is gonna be okie dokie Pinocchio. something that my professors always told me the darkest places on the face are the corners of the eyes right here the corners of the cheeks where the smile is and under the nose my roommates just got home this is going to get embarrassing real fast there now that we have um, some nice gradients in the colors and stuff so we've got the shading on one layer and then we've got her flats on another layer so now what you're gonna do this is where it might get iffy between Photoshop and other programs but you're gonna go to your adjustments and you're going to pick the gradient map and you're gonna create a gradient map that kind of follows the light pattern that you want to make and I've got a bunch of them saved right here that I make myself, but you can make your own. And see, this is where Photoshop might be different. If you don't have the gradient mask availability, you're gonna wanna just color this in manually. We're going to put the gradient map, it's going to be its own layer, and we're going to clip it to this for the moment. Now I'm going to go back in and I'm going to edit it. I don't know if you can see this in the recording, but the gradient map allows you to select different points of color on, um, on a sliding scale. And it, it's really good for creating um, color palettes where the light color changes. 
And this is kind of my default one. It's a very desaturated, simple one with yellow being light and purple being dark. And that's generally because the sun is yellow and most of our lights are yellow. That's generally how shadows will work. You'll have the lighter, warmer color on one end and it's complement the cooler color on the other end. But you can really experiment with this and mess up with, with it. It's like, here's one that's uh, blue to bread. I don't know if it's going to load in. This one's just different shades of blue. This one's pink to blue. This is just the one that I default to most because it's generally, you know, it's the simplest color palette. That is gonna give us a bit of a pink tint and I'm not a huge fan of that. So let's just kind of slide that guy off. I do want this to be a little warmer, so I'm gonna edit this one just a touch. And then you're just gonna mess with it until you get those right. And like I said, if you don't have a gradient map option in the uh, program that you're using, you're just going to manually choose these colors. You can make a palette beforehand and just say, this is gonna be my light, this is gonna be my dark, this is gonna be my darkest dark, this is gonna be, you can easily do it that way. But the point is you wanna end up with something that's kind of got this color of light to it and you're going to, and now I've, sma I've smashed, whew, I've smashed that into one layer now, so now it's just all its own thing. And now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your base layer with your flat colors, and you're going to set it to overlay. And voila, you've applied your colors to your shading. Now this is still a little too orange for my liking, so I'm going to duplicate my overlay layer, and instead of overlay, I'm going to set it to color. And you'll notice that this gets the color, but not the like it gets you the value but it doesn't get you the color that you've chosen so i'm going to set this to be kind of transparent about there and see this is the very very simple way of making and shading it gets you a nice cohesive co uh, light color and light value. It gets you um, your base colors pretty solid. It's really simple to use and I love using it with quick stuff like this. You can use it pretty much at any level of polish that you want. I'm just gonna go ahead and slide in and add her glasses now. You can add it at pretty much any level of polish so you can get this like really nice and clean or you can stick with a sketchy thing like I have today. That looks pretty good to me. And voila, we've got a very simple, very quick, very effective way of doing this. If I check my recording, how long have I been recording? 26 minutes. This took maybe less than 30 minutes to do. And you can make this as simple as you want, as, um, as messy as you want, as clean as you want. It's super easy to do things this way and I love doing it this way. So I hope that this helped, that you learned a little bit of something from it. I uh, might do a few more touch-ups here because I realize her teeth are kind of... I kind of want her teeth to be shiny and new, like bright, because I didn't like that. And then this line is really crisp compared to the other one, so I'm going to go ahead and blur it up a little bit. Yeah, get the nice and messy. We. But like you see, it's super easy to do and it's fun to do, and I hope that this helped. Thank you very much for watching. Um, just a heads up, I'm taking commissions, so if you want to get one of those, you can just check out the description. My Redbubble store is open, and I will say I have some neat designs up for sale on there. My Can't Think Straight ones are the best sellers, and uh, I know uh, a lot of people love those. So uh, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you again in the next video. That will probably not be a month late hopefully. Thank you for watching and you have a lovely, lovely day. I forgot that I need an Amara sample. Please be patient with me. Boop. We've got a little, got a little Amara sample.
Pardon me while I turn on my music. Got my earbuds in on my phone, so. Because, God forbid, I open anything with Open Broadcaster on, it will make my Photoshop slow down so much. Do you ever get it where Photoshop is just like, mm, I know you hit command and you stopped hitting command, but I really want to do keep hitting command. And it'll do that with just everything. Or it'll do that with shift or with alt. It's like, I just wanted to select this color for a hot second. But I want to hold on to it so that you can, you know, go fuck yourself. Sometimes I hate Photoshop. Pardon me while I zoom way in close here. I miss some spots. You miss some spots when you don't zoom in, kids. Whoop. Sound effects are not necessary, but are enjoyed, so I do them. I suggest, maybe, on occasion, be using sound effects in your art. See if it elevates the experience at all. Just... Loop. Sometimes it is easier to kind of like messily block everything in and then just go back in and fix it. That's something that I do a lot. So it looks awful the first pass through and then you go back in and it's like, okay, that's passable. That's what my art is, it's passable. If you, if you squint and you don't look too closely, I'm almost a good artist. Almost. Oh, we forgot her hair. Fuck. Okay. Don't say fuck words, kids. Don't say the fuck words. She's never out of sight. Just gonna, just gonna say it for posterity's sake. Probably gonna remove this in post. This is gonna be fun to edit, man. I'm gonna be, whew.